yesterday's paintings I did on Instagram and I painted this lovely shell so I thought we have to start painting some Christmas decorations or Christmas cards but I think we'll paint another shell today just a quick one I hope to see you there it will be on YouTube and some coffee in a beautiful coffee cup or tea cup <laughs> tea cups um, I love this blue and I love the pink so I want something of both worlds so this is why I have it like this and it's coffee not tea because in the morning I drink coffee and in the afternoons I drink tea so um, let's paint a beautiful shell again so I'm just going to move it out the way I've got a lovely candle on here because it's supposed to be relaxing and candles I don't know the smell of uh, perfume makes me relax um, or relax me I don't know it just makes me a little bit more relaxed to smell beautiful stuff and these are all the goodies we've been painting so far some of these uh, pussy willows a seed pot from a wildflower I painted a quick chili and I will uh, link them all below one of these some of these videos they're all very short so I want to keep it short and sweet and I also painted a clavia uh, seed pod like this all very quick not too much detail it must be fun and relaxing for Instagram I painted this shell uh, which is this one I have a little bit of an obsession with shells and I think today we're going to paint one of these pink ones so oh, we also painted a leaf uh, some leaves um, and this one is from this beautiful flower I'm not sure what this is those nails are there for a tripod so not a tripod uh, an easel so when I paint something and I you know want to view it from the top I normally hook it on the table yeah my husband made this little table for me which is um, easy you can carry it around it's very small you need a very small space I mean if you can look at this this is how small my table is literally two rulers not even two rulers around 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters it's very very tiny so that's the space that you need for watercolors and maybe just a small little chair where you can put extra stuff if you want to but basically what you need is a very small space that's what's so lovely about watercolors it's so clean you can just pack this away fold it up move your brushes out put it in a little another box i mean this is a lovely box to keep your brushes in but unfortunately i have quite a few down here so i can't put them all in here and you can use this or you can use a tiny little plate as a, a palette as well and these are very lovely they're stackable so you should look at little crockery shops where you can find some of these that are lovely to um, keep for watercolors I have quite a few these are the shells that I've painted the shell that I painted I've painted quite a few shells I will link them all below um, uh, so you just tap on the more and you will see all the links or videos there so just go ahead and tap some more if you want to view some more videos but um, I will definitely be painting some of, uh, more of these shells. And okay, so you won't necessarily see my candle now, but there is a candle there. And I have a few of my brushes here and a eraser, the little card. This is a sneaky watercolor set that I keep downstairs here to paint. A little bit noisy. Um, because um, someone's on the deck but um, I think I'll quickly paint this little one here which is my angle is now higher than your angle so we'll just um, you'll see it from a different angle to me I'm seeing it from a little bit further away so um, let's just do a quick little um, there you go. And I want it to look quite rounded, so my pencil markings will be quite light. And then, well, this is very tiny, Amanda. 
let me rub it out i want it quite bigger so a little bit bigger <sighs> so i just have a normal pencil yeah and the reason why i have a normal uh, mechanical pencil is because I don't have my sharpener right here with me so uh, I don't want to battle with sharpening some things and it's a very loose painting and I just draw it in for me so that I can you know um, so I might adjust a few little thingies but I think for now I'm quite happy with that and the lines from what I can see run this way from my angle and then there's a little bit of a highlighted section there but I'm not going to focus too much on that we're basically painting it so loose and easy and fun I want it a little bit rounded there and then that's it so the colors will be very similar again I'm just going to use my eraser and just softly rub out some of these little lines now to start with watercolor if you've never used watercolor i just have my brush here and then i have my little pans which are these little things they call pans or you can have it in tubes you can also squeeze some out on a plate i do have a video um, of how you use watercolors um, and then what you do is you wet your brush and I want a very watery sepia mix, but I also love to mix a little bit of color with it. So I normally take a little bit of this ruby um, rose color, which gives it just a, or you can use permanent carmine. And so it gives it this beautiful pink color. Let me just do a little study here quickly. Like very, very watery, if you can see that. Let me just move it to there like a very watery color so I'm going to use that as the main um, background because the paper is wet a oh, white not wet because the paper is wet now but it's not always wet the paper is white you just take your color and so you can either do wet and wet where you wet the whole painting but I'm just going to use it like this because it's a very tiny shell now if I do paint a bigger shell I will use a little bit more uh, I will use maybe wet on wet it depends on what style I'm painting so I love both I paint wet and wet and I paint uh, wet on dry and vice versa okay so let me just take a sticky of my coffee because it's going to get cold and how beautiful is this the colors and the foam so delicious I love a good filter co uh, coffee in the morning um, and sometimes I will drink decaf but I stopped because I drink quite a lot of coffee and I have to stop. Hey, mm, delicious, so hot. And so this is a Winsor Newton brush but you can use some synthetic brushes for this, perfect for any painting. I'm going to wait, wait. <laughs> wait for this to dry completely and this is the Silman and burn watercolor paper so it's a little sketchbook and i think it's 240 gsm i'm not sure i'll have to double check i can't remember but um it's starting to get a bit cloudy so i hope you guys can see anyway let's go um in with another color so now I want to uh, mix in those little brown little markings. So I'm going to go in with sepia, a little bit more sepia. I'm just going to put it on my palette there. Um, there. And then I want a little bit more of the ruby red just to give it a bit more color. Ah, oh, just because it's fun. It's not the exact colors, but I like it. So it's quite thick and as you can see, it, it's not the best palette for me to use because it's sort of going little balls like that i don't necessarily like it but i don't mind it either so the color i want is round about that color very similar to uh, aubergine but more brown so it's like a purple brown mix that i want and i'm going to this brush holds a lot of water 
actually bought it on Etsy. It's a lovely little travel brush, um, but there are some different travel brushes that you can, uh, you know, paint brushes that you can uh, um, buy anywhere. I just want to use them because I haven't been traveling with COVID. Uh, so um, I bought them for traveling, but we haven't been traveling. So, and then I just take a, another little travel brush and I just flat. And I want to paint in. Now, I don't know if you can see, but there's this little tiny little section there that I'm painting in. So I can see it from my side. You might not be able to see it from your side. And then I use this brush to soften it with clean water. And I'm going to now take a very watery mix of this color that I have and I just move it around and then I want to paint in this little back section here so it's a little bit darker and it's rounded so of course um, I don't want all the pencil markings to shine through and I don't know if you can see that little tip there but I can see it so I just want to paint that in and now what I want to do is normally with your first layer of watercolors, you can rub out some of the pencil markings. Sometimes, not always. And make sure your paper is dry. Because I just want to soften that highlighted section that I paint in there. Because I'm not going to paint it in even though I can see that highlighted section again. So I want very watery. And I can see this little shadowy section here which I want to paint in. That will make it look a little bit more rounded. And then I dip my brush in water and I always have tissue paper ready. Now what did I do with the tissue paper? I have no idea. I clearly left it somewhere. Don't worry, I do have some extra tissue here. Um, and on And then I'm going to leave that to dry so it's very, very watery. And so it's like a pink, I love this pink color that I get on the shelves. So I'm just going to take some more coffee, let that dry for a second, and use the same color. But I want it quite a thick, so I want to dab some of my brush there, and I just want to move it around on the palette to take some of it off and to sort of let it dry a touch and i'm going to just from my angle drop in a few of these little markings that are like this so the paper is slightly wet but i don't mind it because i wanted to blend in yeah and then i'm going to wet my brush and just pick up some of that because it's still a bit wet especially where i just painted that section so i'm going to go back and then just paint this section in here again and i just want to darken this little section and then i wipe it on my tissue paper and i'm going to dry that let it dry then a bit more of that let's see if we can paint in that section now because it's still a bit wet as you can see I, we want it to be a little bit loose not too dry so let me see let's just check the paper because I don't have my hair dryer yet so I can't really check what I want you know if I uh, if it's dry I can't dry it so and I'm just following those little lines and from what I can see on this from my angle I can see quite a few little rounded little things so these ones are a bit longer longer and then they get a little bit smaller and a few little dots and again this side and they go around it so I can't see those ones there but I'm going to just paint them in for the angle that we can see there and I'm going to make those a little bit darker and then these ones are a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and then small. Again, half a one, but bigger, 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 and small. And then there's, I'm painting in a few more because 
my shell is a little bit bigger and just because I can. No rules here. There you go. And it's darker. And then I just want to paint that little back dipping from the shell. And some of these shells I've collected for years and years and years over 27 years and then I um, just want to so watercolour always dry um, much lighter so I'm going to go back and just dab in those little ones that I painted earlier that is now a little bit dry the paper is drier so preferably I need a hair dryer but it's not my normal place where I paint so and I don't have electricity down here necessarily for this so I'm going to now take a little bit of the sepia mix and I want to just paint in those little lines that we have there so my shell is a little bit pink which I don't mind I like it this way and I want to just darken it a bit more but I might have to be careful because I don't want to now wet all of those little lighter um, shell uh, markings that we painted in so i don't want to move it because it is still a little bit wet and you have to be careful because you might just move it in and uh, move it you know um lift up some of the pigment and we don't want that so you can either go lighter or you can go a little bit um, more pink. Um, my paper is wet, so I don't mind going in a bit too pink. I like this color. And a bit more. Now, what makes a shell? I'm just going to lift this up with my brush so it is not too dark and I will go back later and darken it a little bit so I'm going to take a little bit of the this is like a black, ivory black so I don't normally use ivory, ivory black but this is the palette that I have done here and I'm going to use it so I want to be very careful and I want to paint in this little um, shadow here yeah, because it's it just makes the shells and the way the shadow falls is much longer because of the way the sun is at the moment uh, on this patio area here. This place is very relaxing because I have the whole garden here, which is a very tropical section and we have very a lot of wind here. But um, I like the way the light is here on, in the mornings, even in the afternoons. So I wet this whole section underneath here yeah? and now I'm going to just drop this in. Paint it in. So I want very soft lines. And I'm not going to go too far like that shadow that you can see there. Oops. Um so and then I'm gonna go in a little bit darker want a bit more of this ivory black and now I'm going to just drop it in again and you'll see it just goes everywhere and it's soft little lines that you can see it won't be hard but you have to make sure that the rest of the shell is dry and there you go go right next to it so I want to be I want to have a very dark shadow I'm just moving it around and I'm a bit like that now I'm going to take my brush and just lift out some of this on this section here bigger brush because I need quite a lot of water I don't want this to go absolutely everywhere so 
so I just soften it with a big brush like that and this will just prevent it from um, going too dark I don't want it to be too dark so I just want that to be like that and you can take your tissue and just soften it a bit more and then if you want to go a little bit darker against the shell there you can pick up a little bit of a thicker pigment so it's a bit more darker and thicker so I didn't dilute it too much and I just dab it everywhere there and that is our little shell you guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial it's very quick it's very subtle I love the way how delicate it is and I think we will be painting a few more of these shells um, so you can use any color that you have I just use this because all of my colors are right here next to me um, I have quite a few palettes upstairs in my studio but I'm sitting downstairs here now and I'm using what I have and that's what I want you to do is use what you have you don't have to go out and buy any um, of your watercolors to have the same as any other um, youtuber or watercolor artist because that's what they want you to do they want you just to um, have fun and paint some fun paintings so you don't need to go out and buy any watercolors you can use what you have and if you're not sure they will always tell you what you can use to make it easier so you don't have to waste um, money on buying any other pigments because m more than likely you can mix whatever colors you have if you do have if you have paints gray sepia ivory black or um you can even mix a little bit of ultramarine ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna that will create a beautiful gray black and you can just take a drop of a little in crimson and get exactly the same color as that i have here on my shell painting i hope you guys had fun as much fun as i have i will edit this video yes i have to edit this video and i will post it very soon